Red 2 standing by, all four litre and in the green. Welcome back, after a little while, to Mario Party. There's actually kind of a special reason I'm doing this. Now, I intended this to be, well, there was going to be a birthday bash project for myself, just showing off a few fun facts and things like that. It was intended to be a 50 fact special, and I really wasn't happy with the result. Well, actually, no, the... There was supposed to be a birthday bash, a 50 turn festival, the idea of making it a 50 fact special so I had something to talk about rather than just sort of degenerating into, into the usual rambling madness actually came a bit later. Now I do apologise if my voice sounds a little bit off from usual, I've been recovering from the Lurgy, which is a cold. The term Lurgy comes from The Goon Show, the episode Lurgy Strikes Britain, which features a non-existent disease that prompts people to wind up saying the phrase yakaboo a lot and can only be cured by the playing of brass band instruments. And of course, the people who are spreading the rumour about Lurgy, Hercules, Gridpipe Thin and Count Moriarty, the usual villains, do happen to masquerade as brass band instrument manufacturers. It's all incredibly silly, as you might expect from the minds of the Spike Milligan, Peter Sells, and Harry Seacombe, but incredibly funny. Lurgy stuck around in the British vernacular as a slang term for a cold or illness or something like that. So I'm going to be trying to I'm going to try and do my 50 turn special, well 50 fact special in the space of 30 turns, and I'm also doing this as a little bit of a celebration because a very good friend of mine has actually had a birthday recently, so I wanted to celebrate them. So, in essence, I am kind of borrowing, borrowing from the Beatles. You say it's your birthday, it's my birthday too, yeah? Let's get going. So, party mode. Let's get a new game going. We are having a battle royale today. Speaking of battle royale, at the time of recording, F-099 has just hit, and I implore you, Go and play it. If you've got a Nintendo Switch Online membership, go and play it. Please, please show Nintendo that you want another F-Zero game. Because I think this is a Testing the Waters project. And I think it's really fun because it's this beautiful mix of risk and reward like GX was. You've got to time everything just right. Are you going to go in aggressive? Are you going to hold back a little bit? Will you push for the Skyway? How well do you want to race? Do you know how to... Use the boosts to manipulate the jumps and things like that to pull off all those slick moves. It's really good. I was always going to give it a go. Because I'm like, okay, maybe it's not the F-Zero game I was wanting off the top of my head. But let's give it a shot so that we can show people we're interested. So that Nintendo takes notice and it's fun. It's really fun. Anyway, at my friend's request... He usually plays as one of the Mario Brothers if Rosalina is not available, so I'm going to be Luigi, who's probably my favourite of the two. No offence to Mario, but I've always enjoyed Luigi a little bit more. Probably that little bit more personality. Mario has... he has a good personality, but he's just kind of the everyman at the same time. He has to be that balanced... sort of that balanced character who's... Very adaptable, so we'll bring Mario along. We'll have a... Well, Mario, Luigi, Peach and Daisy. I think that should be pretty good. So, DK Stone Statue, I think should be the board. Uh, the settings. So, I want 30 turns. Uh, I probably should put them on Expert, because even when I put them on Hard, the AI was still capable of being dumb as rocks. And even on Expert, I still haven't forgiven Peach for that uh, warp pipe moment back when I did the original LP of this for the channel. Quick plug, go and check that out, please. Wait, what? 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 Oh, 
Oh. I think. So, bonus stars are on. All minigame. Handicap. Okay. We are all set. I'll admit that because I spent most of Saturday sort of flat on my back trying to sleep because the cold hit me really hard, I think it's mucked on my shoulders. I must have slept really badly on them. That's a bit unfortunate. Oh well. Here we go on DK's stone statue. And it's pretty much time to start off our 50 fact special. So, well... Hey, I'm going first! And that's going to kick off with our first fact. For those of you not in the know, Alakazam is my favourite Pokemon. I mention this a heck of a lot, but Alakazam is my favourite Pokemon. The Abra Lion has been my favourite ever since the Saffron Gym episodes of the anime first released. That's going back to the very late 90s. That's quite some way back. So, to round this out, as far as favourite Pokemon facts go, my favourite starter is also my first Pokemon, which is Totodile. My favourite legendary Pokemon of all time is Zapdos, which is ironic because I'm not very keen on thunderstorms. And my favourite pseudo-legendary Pokemon is Metagross. Nine! Good start! Alright. One, two, three... Four, five, or we can go down that way. Uh, items are dirt cheap in this game and you can exploit them like nobody's business. Alright, so... I will buy that. And another one of those, and that'll do for me. Okay. So, we're continuing on with the Pokemon facts when we get to fact number two. I probably couldn't have dragged this out over so many turns. But I suppose if we're getting into other categories for Pokemon facts, my favourite regional bird, if it counts, is Fero. My favourite early game normal type is Furret, pretty much unsurprisingly. My favourite early game bug is Beedrill. Quite a lot of early early series Pokemon. Wow, good dice rolls. So yeah, there. Uh, what else would there? What else would there be? I would have to look up all those categories of Pokemon, but I've got a lot of older choices I like, and some newer ones. It's just that, well, the older ones I've had more time to get to know, but there are some new ones that have become absolute favourites, like Colossal. That thing just stuck with me right from the off. I love that thing. Okay, I've gas bagged enough. So, first mini game. Call of the Goomba. So, fact number two. The first non-red Gyarados shiny Pokemon I found, because of course I started off with gold version, was a Zubat, when I had no Pokeballs. The first po shiny Pokemon I caught was a Graveler which knew Explosion. I was actually using a hacked Milotic a friend had got, a copy of Cynthia's uh, Milotic, and it was shiny. I was sort of curious, I was just training it, listening, and then I heard the shiny sound. Then I heard the shiny sound again, realised that Milotic had come out after the first shiny sound, and my exact words were, long gasp, SHINY GRAVELER, PLEASE DON'T USE EXPLOSION! And Luxray whittled it down and I caught it. My favourite shiny Pokemon are Furret and Alamomola. Alamomola was the end result of me getting the shiny charm in uh, white too. I gotta focus a bit here. I think we ran out of Goombas. Don't know how well I did, I don't think I won. 
Only nine, jeez, yeah, it's, that one's really, really finicky. Oh well. I'll bank my way back in. So yeah, we are going to continue on the Pokemon game trend. Uh, where do I want to put this? Um... Let's put it there, just because I can. All right, nobody has any money now. Luigi's dropping the barrel. So, third fact, Pokemon Heart Gold version is my favorite game of all time. That's not a surprise to anyone who really knows me. Close competitor to that is Fire Emblem Awakening. A fantastic game which also has a lot of sentimental meaning. It got me through very tough times after the passing of my paternal grandpa. It was just something really great. Oh, I'm in last. Uh, you scab! I'm in last two! Jeez, no love for your own brother. I suppose he's got to try and woo Peach. I'll give him that. Oh, wow. Ouch. Poor Luigi. Yeah, as always, it sucks to be Luigi. But yeah, so after number one and number two, I really do have a hard time coming up with whatever the next choice is. So that could be... It could be Bomberman 64, it could be GoldenEye, it could be Banjo-Kazooie, it could be Yoshi's Crafted World. Who knows? Depends on the mood. So, the next fact is, my next favourite Pokemon game is a tie between Emerald version, which I still insist is the definitive Hoenn experience, and... Oh yeah, White 2 and Emerald. White 2 is fantastic, and... Yeah, Emerald's just brilliant. My favourite Fire Emblem game is Awakening, as I've said. My favourite Zelda game is the Link's Awakening Remake. And my favourite Mario game is Mario 64 DS. Though, there are some that could come pretty close there. Odyssey is very, very close, as is the original Paper Mario. Anyway, we've got to blow out candles. Happy birthday! Yep, Luigi's got plenty of air in the lungs. That's how he gets all those good screams out in the horror games. There we are, well done Luigi, and I don't think I'll have had to change the screens around too much. So there we go. And we can move on to fact five as I start my turn. My favorite movie franchises, so I'm really not that much of a cinema goer in all fairness. And I did get it. Oh, what are we gonna get? Oh, we got the triple, nice. So yeah, Star Wars, James Bond, and Indiana Jones are my favorite movie franchises, because I'm not much of a movie goer. From them, my favorite Star Wars films are probably episode four, much as I do love The Empire Strikes Back. There's just something sort of so beautifully self-contained about episode four that just works really well. Oh, he's got Bowser. So, episode 4, I and I just loved 7. I know it's kind of a retread of 4, but it just worked. And it could have set up so much. I mean, I'll probably get a bit of flack for saying I do like The Last Jedi. I do like that, and it's a pretty good cerebral exercise. But I do feel it's a bit sad they didn't commit to some of its ideas. But I probably lean towards 7 a little bit more as a bit of relaxation. My favourite James Bond film is... Golden Eye, I'd probably have to say. Skyfall is very, very close. And my favourite Indiana Jones film is Last Crusade. I mean, how can you go wrong with Harrison Ford and Sean Connery? And the mix of seriousness and comedy is just on point. It's wonderful. So, 
When it comes to fa other favourite films, getting on to fact number six, my favourite films not from any of the above are Spaceballs, which is kind of Star Wars anyway, but is such a good movie, such a very loving parody of all those great sci-fi movies. Snatch, which a friend introduced me to and led to so many running jokes during Goldeneye. Oh, we got a battle game already! Snatch is just really, really, really good. And, of course, The Blues Brothers, one of the best movie musicals going around. It just hits so well, it's incredibly funny, it just... I can't praise it enough, really. Everything just clicks. So, oh, I'm probably not going to win this one, I've got to concentrate. Because, here's the problem, I've got reflexes. So I'll go quiet again. Yeah, you look you get stuck looking all over the I only got like four. You get stuck looking all over the board for them, and that's kinda because I have to sort of make the connection. Oh what Oh, I thought that was all of them. Well, I don't get anything, but yeah, that's kind of the problem with being the human player. You are governed by reflexes. And the AI kind of isn't. So Nobody's got... Nobody's doing very well. We can't keep any coins. You know what? I'll see what this does. Okay! <laughs> 10, 10, 10! Very nice. Alright, let's shoot past. So, fact 7. While I don't watch a lot of anime anymore, Holic is my favourite anime series. A friend of mine got me into it, and I absolutely love it. It just has this wonderful mix of the supernatural and the absurd. Yuko always seems like she's just there to get drunk and have a good time, and in fairness she probably is. But then you get those serious moments that show off why she's one of the most powerful characters in the entire Clamp universe. She's just really, really good when she gets serious and really, really dangerous. Plus, it doesn't hurt that she looks gorgeous and always has a great array of outfits. I absolutely love Yuko, and I have a black mark and a plushie as a result. And onto a slightly different topic as far as food goes. My favourite fruit is the apple. My favourite vegetable is pumpkin, and I especially love pumpkin soup. And if I'm going to a restaurant and I want a specific order, I'll usually get calamari. I don't know why I just do it. Used to be the chicken palmer, but I go for calamari these days. All right. Plush crush. So yeah, I uh, I really do. I'm not that keen on bananas for some reason. I just really like apples. Oranges are pretty good. But pumpkins probably stem from Banjo-Kazooie. And the pumpkin spell. Oh wait, they, they've got them? Righto. Okay, that worked. But yeah. So, pumpkin soup. Absolutely beautiful. Lovely, oh, yeah. lovely winter food pumpkin soup. So, I work in an office for Fact 9, but I don't drink... That's not the actual fact. The actual fact is that I don't drink very much coffee, despite the fact... I work in an office. My co-workers often wonder how I function without... Let's put that there. Without any coffee. Sometimes I wonder too, given we're dealing with... 
retail. I gotta concentrate. I'm terrible at this. How did I get 15 coins? I was awful at that. Sometimes I'm not sure if the Wii U stylus picks up on things that well. Because I missed so many coins. I'm, like, sometimes I'm not sure if it registers or I'm just really bad. Like, I don't want to blame my tools. I know I'm bad. As comedian Trevor Marmalade once put it, a poor tradesman blames his tools and a poor team blames the tools umpire in the game. But, yeah, so... Back to the facts, I don't drink very much al I don't drink very much coffee and I don't drink alcohol either, at least very rarely. I'll have a glass of wine now and then, but not very much, or maybe a bit of whiskey, and that's it. I like to joke that it's because I'm naturally clumsy, stupid, and obnoxious, but really I just don't bother with it. If we're diverted and we can divert back to Pokemon for fact 10, despite the fact I was into Pokemon. From the very beginning, the first Pokemon game I actually played was Gold version. I didn't get... I saw friends play Red version. Well, Red and Blue. And... I've really got to pay attention. Where's that ball going? But yeah, so I saw friends play... Uh, play the original games, the Red and Blue, but I didn't actually play them myself. So yeah, it was... Oh wait, hang on! I thought the letter was the... Uh... I screwed up and I thought the letter was the end of it. I switched off. And it's like, oh wait, the letter gets sucked up too. Oh well. So yeah. So Gold was the first game I got in the series for cr Christmas 2000, I believe it was. Which sounds like a really, really cool, cheesy movie from the 80s. Can you imagine that? Coming soon to a cinema near you! Christmas 2000! Santa is back and this time it's personal! Or something like that. I really shouldn't do that having recovered from a cold. So, let's get on to more facts as I bring up another first. The first video game my brother and I got was Shadows of the Empire for the Nintendo 64. This was also around the time that Episode 4 had its 20th anniversary in cinemas. Have I landed on my own star-stealing hex? Yes, I have. At least I'll get coins out of it. So yeah, that, that, that probably started two lifelong fascinations. A love of Star Wars and a love of video games. So Shadows of the Empire has a lot for which I am grateful. Oh, and a hidden block. Oh. I'm terrible at button mashing. Oh, yeah. 18, that's about what I usually do. Oh, yeah. So it's nice to know that I haven't lost what little skill I had. So yeah, there's that. But following on as fact 12, from this was the coin toss. Like, you know how some people mention sliding doors moments? Those moments that can change your life forever and you wonder what would have happened if everything went the other way. He was a perfect example of one of those. I think Christmas in 97 it, it might have been. Maybe 96, maybe 97, I'm not sure. But my brother and I were lucky enough to be getting another Nintendo 64 game. Oh, Daisy's got the good coin block. So. It was a coin toss. At the time, I actually wanted Mario Kart 64. Hard to believe given what we know. My brother wanted Mario 64 and being young kids, we simply could not decide. Whoa! Oh, I thought I was Mario for a moment! Well done, Luigi. Ah, terrible storyteller. So I was paying attention to the wrong Mario, brother. Ah, oh, well. 
that sounds like Mar that sounds like Luigi in a nutshell. Everybody's focusing on Mario. But anyway, so the coin toss. My brother won that coin toss and we got Mario 64. To this day, it remains one of my favourite games. Mario 64 DS, as I said, is my favourite Mario game. What would have happened? What would have happened if I'd won the coin toss? We will never know. But I mean, as it stands, I'm a fairly ardent F-Zero fan. So we are up to turn 7, aren't we? Yep, that's been pretty good. Let's get rid of that, and move on to 13. Oh, I'm going to land on my own hex trap again. Let's go this way. So, I always had bad luck with the, the hollow foil Pokemon cards as a kid. It kind of continues to this day in all fairness. But yeah, the first one I got was somebody's spare base set, Gyarados. It took a fair bit of uh, time to get that. It took ages for me to actually get a hollow foil from a pack, compared to my brother who has always had really good luck with things like this. The best... The absolute best uh, hollow pull I got was Dark Raichu back on a, on a trip to England in 2001, early 2002. Ooh, Starblock behind me. She's going to land on it, no? Keep an eye out for that. So, usually I've mentioned that my brother tends to have a bit of an advantage on things, despite the fact he's usually better than me at a lot of things, and I don't mean this to sound like I'm complaining. He just has a lot more natural skill at many more things. I've, I do have two decent winning streaks against him. The best ones were with the Erica Sabrina hybrid deck I made from a couple of structure decks I got as a birthday present back when the old gym series decks were a thing. And a long running streak on the man with the golden gun setting in GoldenEye multiplayer. He did eventually break both those streaks. Koga's Beedrill was a pain in the butt and he just got better than me in GoldenEye. But I at least had those. I don't have a lot and they, I don't mind really. I don't begrudge him anything because in all fairness, he's worked to get where he is. And if he's just got the natural skill and I work at what I do, I'll be happy with that. There is another little story that'll come in for Fact 15 though. And again, that's the problem. I have to deal with reflexes. Like, I'm not exactly slow at that, but they just have better reflexes oh, than yeah. me. So, the one thing I do hold over him, and I think uh, if we're being competitive, because I don't want to be competitive, really. I don't want to make it seem like I'm trying to be better than him at a hell of a lot of things and keep up that petty sibling rivalry we used to have. He deserves better than that. And I need to be better than that. I acknowledge that he's got some amazing skills and I'm happy with that, but my best 10-pin bowling score was against him and his now wife when I rolled 199. There had been a bit of a long-running joke between the two of them, I gotta focus again. Well, that was much better. But yeah, so they had had a running joke that uh, because of a, a joking claim that if uh, one of them got three strikes, the other had to propose and it turned into buying a pack of burger rings or a drink. So they'd been trying to get three strikes in a row, the turkey, when they bowled against each other for a while now and none of the, neither of them had had any success. 
The first time they invited me along, I got 199, and not only did I get three strikes in a row, I got four strikes in a row. They were a little miff that I came out of nowhere and managed to do that. Ooh, the one star hex, but Peach doesn't have any. So yeah, admittedly, I like the burger rings thing because the AFL footballer Adam Cooney actually proposed to his girlfriend using a burger ring as a substitute for a wedding ring. So, on to, uh, on to fact 16, a bit of a longer one. I've played a few different TCGs, because I mentioned the uh, structure decks. I've, I'm, I've played the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG and Pokemon TCG, but I mostly play the Cardfight Vanguard TCG. In Yu-Gi-Oh! I favour Psychic types and Machine types, but my... What I could, the one deck that I, I've got a Gun Dragon deck, but probably the one I'd consider really functional is my crappy normal monster deck. It's got powerful spells and traps and a bunch of really crappy normal monsters. You know, the stuff like Hinatama, Mechanical Snail, things like that. The sort of stuff that makes you go, what the hell is this guy doing? And yeah, so yeah, I do use Psychics. Oh, Luigi getting that air. Oh, don't fall off, Weege. Make the brave jump! Where's the path? Luigi wins! I got there first, but yeah. Alright, we all get to win. So yeah, I favoured Psychics and Machines. I love the Gun Dragons, and they're probably my favourite machines, but I've stuck with Psychics a lot. In Pokemon, I love Psychic types. In Vanguard, when it comes to V-Series, I play Silverthorns from Pale Moon, Night Rose from Grand Blue, Blouse from Nova Grappler, some Musketeers from Neo Nectar, and the Jewel Knights from Royal Paladin. In Overdress, I also use Pale Moon, and I have Thegria as well, but Zorga is my main build. It's the one I've focused on a lot because, well, it's my aesthetic in a sense. I'm gonna risk it for the biscuit. Now, there is a funny story about Cardfight Vanguard and going to the regionals. The only regionals I've ever been to. I was functioning on no sleep and I can be a fairly grumpy person when I don't actually get any sleep. Mario's going to Bowser again. I didn't get any sleep because usually when I do actually try and get to sleep early, my brain goes into hyperdrive and it also didn't help that the dog next door was a yappy little menace that just would not shut up and kept barking every five seconds all night. Constant yap 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 every five seconds and ah, oh, not communism. And yeah, I think the dog probably deserved to be punted into the stratosphere, but I can't bring myself to hurt animals. Anyway, we headed down to Melba. I'm functioning on no sleep. This is back in the original format, and I'd put together my early limit break Jewel Knight build, focusing on Salome. My first match was actually against the Queensland regional champ. He very wisely saw what I was doing, realising that I'd got the setup to go for the heavy crit early on, and decided to use the Sentinel to block my attacks, which was good because I got two criticals with Salome and would have taken him out in one shot before he hit grade 3, basically. I did wind up winning the game. I unfortunately blanked out because my brain switched off. But I did pretty well. I still made it into the top 20%. 36 out of 180, which isn't too bad. I've also got a few other different stories from convention two years in a row at a Melbourne anime convention called Manifest. I got second place in a Super Smash Brothers tournament. One of them was to my brother. We wound up getting uh, one and two in one of the semi-finals anyway, so we were advancing to that anyway. But he pulled off probably the best move I've seen with Snake. We did have Smash Balls on. And the Smash Ball was just drifting toward, drifting around and he'd thrown down some C4 earlier and with perfect timing just detonates the C4, gets the smash ball and goes for the grenade launcher. It was too perfect, but a lot of people actually started adopting some of the strategies I had because this was a very different tournament, not a serious one, much more casual, like WarioWare was a stage for example. And when it came to the uh, 
mini game, the micro game where you had to avoid the arrows, everybody just followed my suggestion of walk off screen a little bit and avoid the arrows. Yeah, no, I'm not too ashamed I came second, especially since I was playing as Link, who was kind of terrible in Brawl, tournament-wise. Those tournaments were also where we wound up getting Bad Cosplay Wario. I'll tell you after this. Oh, I think I went too fast. That didn't go very well. Usually I'm a bit better than that. Yeah, I think I was mashing too hard down on the screen there. That didn't do much good for my shoulder. I've definitely injured that somewhere along the way. So yeah, it was because of a weird Wario costume. I think he had the uh, red overalls and blue shirt that we decided to call him Bad Cosplay Wario because we hadn't seen heaps and heaps of Brawl. I'm not sure if we got it at the We might have had it at the, We probably did have it at the time, but we hadn't used a lot of Wario. And I decided that he looked like he was a bad Mario cosplayer, so that's why he was bad cosplay Wario. I think it was from the first time I went to Manifest or something like that that uh, I wound up getting what's pretty much officially my treasure now. My Statue of Fierce Deity Link. That's one of the few things I know I definitely protect. If I had to sort of pick things to escape with, should the house burn down. Oh yeah. And I've mentioned it before, but we're coming up to fact 20 and I do actually own plushies. A friend knitted Bronzog, Pump, Pump Kaboo and Tomoe from Queensblade. So I've still got those. Some of the stuffing has sort of rotted away in Bronzog, unfortunately, but it still holds up all right. So I have those lovely knitted ones from a friend. And I also have a Makar plushie, which I got for Christmas, an Abra plushie, which I think came from a friend, and my Mokuna. And there's a little stuffed cat I got from somewhere that's sort of a little mascot. I'm not sure where, but that little cat just sticks around. So that's brought us up to fact 20. We're keeping pretty good pace on that. I suppose the next few facts probably aren't going to do that much. They're fairly easy to deal with. But yeah, I think a, a combination of... Oh dear. It's Bowser. A combination of work and some pretty bad habits wound up injuring my shoulders a bit. It's not an official fact, but one time... Do I actually have the flower pot incident? Oh, Daisy has to fork up a star. Bowser again. Okay. I... I don't actually think I have... I don't actually think I have the flower pot incident on here. But yeah, so I decided that it would be a really good idea if I wound up lifting a very, very heavy flower pot and supporting it with my left arm. I somehow got it into the car, but when I tried to get it out of the car, my left arm pretty much just collapsed. Okay, hang on, I need to switch things around. Alright, so yeah, my left arm pretty much just collapsed. And yeah, I think that pulled my shoulder out of position. Mario, you jumped on me. I've survived somehow. Somehow I peached. Died right at the end. It's like the, I lost and they just gave up. So yeah, what I think happened is that it pulled my left shoulder really badly out of position because like when I say it felt like everything fell apart, I wasn't kidding. And I think that pulled my right shoulder up to compensate and ripped a few of the muscles in that. And sort of trying to sleep yesterday. Well, well, all through Saturday, I must have slept badly on my arm. Okay. Story of personal trophies, I guess. Wait, hang on, did I... 
Was it Daisy or was it Peach who threw that down? I wasn't paying attention. I've been too busy rambling. Wait, Daisy's is the star block. I don't know what Peach's is. I can't risk it. Mario might land on it, but yeah. So, going on to fact 21, I don't actually have that many personal trophies. The few I've got really come from the soccer club. There might be a few lost to, to the mists of time that I forgot about, but the ones I remember were a couple of junior soccer championships in a team where, well, if I'm going to be honest, even my cat could have got a trophy. I was pretty much an afterthought at the time. I wasn't very good at the beginning. Ironically, I've improved a lot more since I left the club. And yeah, both my brother and I actually have uh, commendations for best junior clubman. I used to be heavily involved with the club, but times have changed. Probably the biggest award I do have... Oh, it's another battle game. Please don't let it be the stargazing one. Probably the biggest commendation I have was getting Ducks of Year 8. And even that kind of backfired because... Because it kind of gave me an ego. I let my ego take over. And I didn't work as hard as I should have. I regret that. I should have used that as a catalyst to be better and I didn't. I've made plenty of mistakes in my time, but it's still at least nice to know that if I committed myself, I would be very capable. Oh, there's one sheep too. Peach is gone. Wait, Mario's gone. Oh, wait, have I won? Oh, Daisy must have been, must have been a frame, I, must have been a frame before, uh, uh, I must have been a frame after Daisy, before Daisy. That was so close, I honestly thought I'd survived. Lost a coin out of that, I think. <sighs> the amount of coins has chopped and changed so much, but I've still got the opportunity to build up. So, we can move on and go to... We can wind up going to fact... 23. And that fact is that I actually learned how to swim. Now, if I can buy the star pipe and I'll actually be fine. Because they're not going to steal from me, from me very often. So, I actually learned the basics of swimming from an Olympic gold medalist. And I'm not, uh, I'm not actually joking. I did, I did actually have swimming lessons with Olympic gold medalist Faith Leach. The more you know. I was always pretty good at it, but I never really committed to the bit, which is kind of sad. I probably could have done more with it. But yeah, I've never been one for going to the pool and I don't like the beach very much, so... Yeah, not much. Ooh, 10 coins to me. Thank you, Mario. Or nine, that'll do. So, I do actually have, well, I've got a few other awards as well. The uh, Duke of Edinburgh Award, come to think of it, I do have, I don't really know what the Duke of Edinburgh Award does, but I have the bronze level of that, whatever it may be, and yeah, it was an interesting escapade. We were supposed to be camping at a beach, but it was way too windy, so we camped at a caravan park and I only had a really flat mattress thing that was uncomfortable as all get out. I was probably unpopular with my tent mate because, well, among the canned food my parents insisted I pack was baked beans, 
And one of the most interesting things we had, for whatever reason, was watching an ant fight. On one of our walks, we wound up seeing a, a couple of ants duke it out along the way, and everybody was really interested in that. I don't know if I had to pick something I was interested in. I was probably at the time trying to find out if there was somewhere I could get Yu-Gi-Oh cards. I think I got some Metal Raiders cards. But yeah. So yeah, I still have no idea what the Duke of Edinburgh's award actually does. Did we win? I don't think we won. I think... Well, I'm really good at that. I keep thinking I've won and then I don't, and then I think I... And then I don't think I've won and I do. Huh. So... As far as talents go, if I actually have the practice and the teaching, I can sing reasonably well. I wound up learning how to sing for the school production of The Wizard of Oz. I got the role as the Tin Man. Which led to some very interesting results because I had, well, metal and plastic armor. This was supposed to be put together by the metalwork class, but that sort of wound up not eventuating in a sense. I'm not, well, I can't quite remember what happened. One of the costume designers had to keep working on it herself. And so there I am. Oh, Mario's hit that. Yep, not a good turn for Mario. But yeah, so I've got this metal and plastic armor. I've got a funnel hat, gardening gloves, gum boots, face paint, and it's pretty hot for November. Like 32 degrees on the day of the matinee under hot stage lights. I couldn't even sit down properly in the armor. I had to lie down and the chest plate was so heavy I couldn't properly get back up. But probably the funniest thing about it all was that at one point, the Lion, the Scarecrow, and the Tin Man disguise themselves as ghosts to rescue Dorothy. Now, I've got a funnel hat and I'm wearing a white sheet. You guys can see where this is going, right? Some of my friends were talking to me afterwards, they, like, we were certain you looked like somebody from the KKK. We were convinced a black guy was going to storm the stage and beat you up. To be honest, I probably wouldn't have blamed you. And let's go on to music for a little bit more. My favourite recording artists are Frank Sinatra, The Beatles, Adele, Le Hot Club de France, which is the group put together by Django Reinhardt and Stefan Grappelli, and Miles Davis. I decided to branch out into Le Hot Club de France just to try and give myself something different to listen to. And yeah, it I love that sort of upbeat style, that hot jazz. I don't really think you can call it what it's originally known as because, well, the term it involves is admittedly somewhat offensive these days. And I understand that, but it, I, I'm, it's sort of a case of, okay, what, what do I need to call it because we probably need a different name for it. Suppose it never hurts to ask. Yeah, we, we... Wait, who won? Us by a nose! Which is probably not fair with the Mario Brothers around. So yeah, there we go. That also leads into fact 27. My favourite composers are John Williams, pretty much a given. John Barry, who worked on several of the James Bond movies. Koji Kondo, who's done a lot of work for Nintendo. How many coins do I have? Uh, let's check the map. And of course, Rare's composers, Grant Kirkhope and David Wise. Uh, let's use that halfway block and see what happens. I probably should have seen that coming in all fairness. I probably should have guessed I'd wind up landing on that. But there you go. So yeah, I absolutely love the music from Rare's video games. And yeah, I love a lot of Nintendo compositions too. So, also another fun fact. 
Both my parents work as teachers, or they did, they're retired now, but <clears throat> both of them worked as teachers, and I have a lot of respect for the education profession as a result. <clears throat> I did try to follow in their footsteps, but unfortunately, I wound up suffering a major mental breakdown and wasn't able to do it. It's a bit sad, I would have liked to do it, but it was just a schmozzle and I didn't really handle everything very well. Though it probably didn't help that the class I got stuck with was, as Dad pointed out, a bunch of meatheads. Sometimes you just get the idiots in school. And in customer service. Okay, so what's Daisy going to do? So you will have noticed that Daisy is relentlessly stealing from Peach. Now, I initially thought that the AI tried to target players with hexes. But, what they will actually do is target the highest number in the roster. Apart from themselves. So, as you can see, Daisy is constantly targeting Peach as player 3. If it was Peach, she'd target Daisy. If it was Mario, he'd target Daisy as well. Now, if Daisy had no items, then Mario would target Peach, and Peach would target Mario. Only if the two other targets have no items, will an AI actually target player one. This wound up popping up in the Runaway Guys Let's Play, because Wario just randomly started stealing from John, and John was freaking out about why Wario was being so stupid. What John didn't realise at the time was that particular issue happened that they'd target the highest numbered player. Because John was number three, John was always stuck as player three, so the AI was always going to steal from him with, with the snag bag. Bad luck for John. All right, wheel around. So you can't really shoot people at point blank. Fortunately, I'm actually pretty good at this. Wait, that counted? See, the AI is really bad at this. I don't know why. The world is mine! But yeah, the AI is really, really bad at that. Admittedly interesting fact for fact 29 about my family. There's a certain closeness about some of the birth dates. Mum and Dad were actually born five days apart. Same year, five days apart, but admittedly in completely different parts of the country. My brother and I were actually born on the same day of the week and same time of day. There's a bit of a difference in age, but we have that interesting coincidence about us. It's pretty interesting for mum and dad because it allows us to sort of get everything together and celebrate family birthdays as a big event, which is pretty cool. I'm really lucky that I've actually got the really good family connections. Let's go. Oh, come off it! That's... Oh, that's... That's some jank. I'll take it, but that's some jank. So yeah, I've got good family connections and I do appreciate my family helping me out. I did actually have a long distance relationship, a, like an actual proper romantic relationship, but the tyranny of distance wound up wrecking that. Just kind of unfortunate. Maybe I wasn't in the right mental state to, uh, to do anything with it, I suppose. It would have been nice to, who do I want to be my friend? Well, Mario brushed me over for Peach, but I will take the moral high ground and show him I've got no hard feelings. Oh, yeah. yeah, tyranny of distance and all that. I kind of felt unworthy because it's like, I don't think I can do anything. I'm not sure if I can be the person you need me to be, but it all started because somebody needed help and somehow my crappy, my allegedly crappy Nokia was able to make an international call. I got in there to help someone who was a friend, and it sort of blossomed a bit from there. 
just be nice to people. I think that's the ultimate lesson, be nice to people. But it's... I suppose we could move on to fact th 31 because this year has actually led to an interesting oh it all makes sense now discovery. I'm not a romantic, but I'm largely asexual it seems. Sex ed in high school never seemed interesting, it just didn't really catch my attention for some reason. I've never really mu had much desire for actual physical intimacy beyond hugs in my own, in my own time. Because if you do suddenly try and hug me out of nowhere, I will freak out and I'll get annoyed with you. But, if I want to hug someone, then I will. Uh, Buzzy Beetle. Wait, that's a green shell. Red shell. Where was the. Thank you. So wait. Damn it. Damn it. I wasn't really paying attention because I was trying to think about my story. So yeah. I'm largely asexual. I don't really give a damn about having sex. It doesn't bother me. And I'm proud to be able to say that because it's, it's truer to me. I don't need to have that sex element in a relationship. I would just prefer something romantic, that physical, that sort of s smaller, smaller scale physical intimacy, hugs, kisses, things like that. Just the sort of things that help you stay close to someone, that sort of thing. And now we can sort of move on to actual injuries for some reason, because that's how I ordered these facts, because they are essentially scrambled. My worst injuries have both been self-inflicted, which it will probably not surprise you to know. Apart from the flower pot incident, where I lifted that very heavy f flower pot and pretty much ripped my bloody arm off, I once tripped over a, <coughs> a bouncy ball and cut my toe on a metal doormat frame. Yeah, for some reason, the doormats in the various buildings of primary school were separated from the actual carpet by metal covered with plastic. Bit of an OHS nightmare. So this particular one, it's another battle game. So this particular one had some of the metal exposed. I managed to trip on the bouncy ball because I'd taken my shoes off as we were supposed to, fell over, slammed right at the base of my left big toe on the metal and left a big cut. I was on crutches for a little while and my toenail grows crooked. The other one was, well, just as stupid. I say I was trying to get rid of a spider, but that's a lie. I was going around a corner and I was trying to check the tire pressure on my on my bike because my bike's tires have a really have always had a really bad habit of running flat and then I kept getting dive bombed by magpies and that was enough for riding. Walking was fine. So, I'm riding around the corner, and I was trying to see what was happening with the tyres, were they running flat, and I crashed into the back of a parked car, sort of thumped in, swung around to the side, smashed the back window of this car with the side of my head. I was wearing a helmet and bounced back. Like, there were lots of cuts on my face, but they, they were bleeding like hell. But they were very small and ultimately not a lot of damage. I've got a couple of small scars along the way, but I seriously thought I'd done some pretty bad damage or killed myself or whatever. Cheap chump again. But yeah, those are my worst injuries. Somehow I have not injured myself doing things. Like the time I tried to change what I thought was a smoke alarm by standing on a swivel chair. So yeah, how I didn't fall off was anyone's guess. And of course it turned out what I was trying to change wasn't actually... No, well it wasn't actually... And they all died. And I won! What? 
I'm going to have to see a slow-mo replay of that. What? But yeah, so I took off what I thought was the smoke alarm. It actually turned out to be a speaker for a, a now defunct alarm system at the place. And unfortunately I couldn't make it go back in the ceiling because while it had sat up there just fine, the little wedges in the ceiling had just made the holes a bit too big for it to sit comfortably back in and we had to readjust things. So yeah, if you ever wondered why the lifespan for men is a bit shorter than that of women, we do stupid things like stand on a swivel chair to change a smoke alarm. Okay. Fact 33, the only overseas trip I've had was, well, thanks to family. Mum was doing a French teaching course, got to go to France for a bit, and oh, I got the star block, I think I got the star block. I got the star block. Three stars! Let's a go! But yeah, so Mum was in France, we got to tour around England, we visited Stratford-upon-Avon, spent a bit of time in Wales, we made it to London, and I was really happy with that because we got to see Abbey Road, we got to go to Lords. We did have our photo taken on the Abbey Road crossing, even though there were only three of us. We got to go... I, I saw the MI6 headquarters at Vauxhall Cross. We went down to Dover for a bit, places like Polgate and Folkestone, and in France we toured around World War I battlefields for a bit. When we were at Villers Bretonneux, we actually wound up getting a little bit of a tour of the place by someone who turned out to be the mayor, the deputy mayor of the town. Because, well, he found out we were Australians and was really happy to receive us. Because Australian soldiers had actually helped rebuild the town in the aftermath of World War One. They have a lot of appreciation for Australians and I just hope the idiots we used to have in charge, and probably the idiots we have in charge now, don't stuff things up. Because I've got nothing against France. I like the place. I'd love to go back someday. So there's that. I ha and as far as travel goes, I have actually visited all six states of Australia, but I don't think I've visited the territories. I refuse to go to the Northern Territory because it's hot and humid, and I hate hot and humid, and I've just never been to Canberra. There is actually an administrative difference between states and territories in Australia. Right, so X. Damn it. I was trying to rush and we wound up losing. But yeah. I'm not 100% sure what it is, but there is indeed an administrative difference. I'm going to need to grab a drink. Let me just pause for a moment. There we go. <clears throat> so. I am running my mouth a lot more than usual. So, fact 35. I've actually met a few famous people along the way. The musical artists John English and Tom... Tom Burlinson, voice actor Todd Habercorn, Australian sailor Glenn Ashby. Probably the two most memorable ones were the brief meeting with Adam Goods and Michael O'Loughlin as a result of some, uh, well, I'm um, sort of work for the dollar. It's like a sort of you get out there and do some work in exchange for unemployment benefits and it's supposed to go on your CV or something like that. I'm not sure it ever benefited me because I didn't really get a job out of it per se. But because of the, those connections, I actually managed to get to meet Adam Goods and Michael O'Loughlin. And I remember just being utterly awestruck by the presence of Adam Goods. O'Loughlin's fantastic as well, but with everything that had gone on regarding some of the racism sagas in Australian sport in which Adam Goods had been involved, I remember just sensing this incredible strength that by virtue of my birth, I will never have to wield. But an incredible sadness that I will never know or fully understand. And that has 
that has stuck with me. The fact that I cannot know what Indigenous Australians have been through, but that I can do something, what little it is, to help. The other notable meeting, again an Indigenous Australian, Uncle Jack Charles. An absolute marvel of a man who, was, who had lived an incredible life. Oh yeah, I am actually going to... I'm probably going to have to put a little disclaimer at the start of this. Just to let people know that it does actually... If there is some of that... If there are any Indigenous Australians watching, I will have to put that disclaimer in. Because sometimes... I believe there are some cultural taboos for a certain period of time for speaking in a, a deceased person's name. For I, I think it was around about a year or so. In one example, the Port Adelaide footballer Willie Rioli. Willie was his father's name as well, so when his father passed away, Willie was known as Junior for a year because his father's name was not to be spoken as part of the sorry business, as they call it. When that sorry business finished, he went back to being known as Willie. I don't understand absolutely everything about it, but I want to. Okay. And... I suppose I get an opportunity to pump up my own tyres for a little bit by pointing out... It's only a little thing, but I'm technically a published writer as a result of uh, working on the uh, technical college... That's how you describe TAFE. The technical college book publication. I wound up having a piece published in one of the in the writing anthology we worked on. Oh, somebody stunned me. Who was that? This is such a good mini game. But yeah, so technically I can claim I'm a published writer and I'm a fairly handy editor on top of that. So Daisy got me. We can find Peach. There's Peach. Ah. Daisy beat everyone. But yeah, I really like that idea of stealth in this game. It's really good. So yeah. I, w I also got to be the host for the official book launch. And I and I was able to meet the uh, guest of honour who was uh, noted Australian uh, TV and film legend John Flowers. He signed my copy of uh, the book with a simple... W Phrase of encouragement? Probably one of the highest accolades you can afford someone in Australia. You done good. And, well, now we can move on to cats as part of the facts. Concentrating again. Not so good, but it feels like you've got to press down a bit firmer with this stylus. It's not quite the same as the DS. Maybe I have to recalibrate the touchscreen. But yeah, I've had six <coughs> official pet cats over the years. As fact 37 and one adopted by decree. The very first pet cat I had was Cleopatra. My brother had Matilda at the time. Mario gets 18 coins. So, Cleo and Tilly were our first cats. Unfortunately, Cleo was run over by a car and Tilly died of snake bite. Then we wound up getting Gracie, and, and uh, for a while little M accompanied her, but unfortunately M died of an abscess. I think we named her M after Judy Dench. And so we wound up getting Molly. Gracie and Molly were essentially buddies because they got stuck together when we headed overseas to... Uh, to England and France. So, uh, about 10 years later, my brother decided he wanted a black cat, and that was where Kiwi came into it. Kiwi is pretty much, she was pretty much the runt of the litter. She has a little crooked tail that didn't quite have its muscles formed properly, but it just adds to her cuteness. So, Kiwi is the sixth cat. Gracie and Molly are no longer with us. Kiwi's the only one that survives. The one that was adopted by decree is Nexu. Nexu is the black cat I found on my walk one evening. He was a black tomcat that had been hit by a car or something. And I, I tried to get him some help. I did try to do everything I could to make sure he could be alright, but ultimately all I could do was 
give him a bit of warmth and love and comfort in his last moments. We were able to take him to a vet who could give him a proper, proper burial, but there's a rock in the cat memorial garden for Nexu. Nexu is the cat-like uh, creature that appears in the Geonosis arena in episode 2, and I'm like, alright, I don't care what anyone says, this cat had an owner when he died, someone wants to see him again, he can join the other cats, Nexu is my cat. And as a result, my Meowscarada in Scarlet version is named Nexu. We did have a pet dog once, Fact 38, but we picked the wrong breed for our property. A uh, fairly, I think it was a Border Collie Cross, and we had to make sure he was given to a more fitting home. This was before Cleo and Tilly. But yeah, make sure you pick the right pet for the situation. Yeah, I probably have to fix the calibration on the touchscreen. Something about this doesn't seem quite right. We still won, but... Yeah, so now we can uh, wind up... <sighs> wind up moving on to Fact 39, some from more recent years. Which is kind of an interesting one. After many years of struggling and various quote-unquote help from crappy job service agencies, which are more like money-making scams for a few rich bastards along the way. I... And mind you, these organisations, through all my years of suffering and dealing with Centrelink... My voice is going a bit off because I can tell that my sinuses are gunched up. They only found me two jobs in all of 15 years dealing with them. That's how crap job service providers are. Neither of them went really well, which sucked. They weren't really what I wanted to do, but I tried, and they didn't go very well because people didn't think I was a good fit. So, after all that suffering, the only jobs that worked I found for myself. The fu I finally set myself on the right path and found work. Just as the pandemic started in 2020. I'm just like, oh great, all of my years of hermit practice are going to finally pay off. I've spent so long avoiding people, I can finally shine. Hey, here's a job dealing with people. You couldn't make it up. You just could not make it up. I mean, as it stands though, the one I've got, I've actually held it down for two years. And I'm so happy to be there. And now another random one. To this point, I have actually never required an extended stay in hospital. I've generally been pretty lucky to have good health. I, I will always continue to take care of my health. I've taken myself off to hospital for a few things, like I had a big, I presume a panic attack or something that sent my pulse racing at the start of the year, but I haven't had genuine cardiac issues. I've been very fortunate. I don't think I'm going to win this one. But yeah, like, I've been lucky. I haven't broken a bone, and I've never had an extended stay in hospital. I did have have to get a bit of glue, a special healing sort of sti wound he sealing glue put on my face when I crashed into the back of the car, and I did have to go under anaesthetic when my wisdom teeth were taken out. Though, of course, when I did recover from the anaesthetic, I couldn't resist trading a few lines from M.A.S.H. with my dad. Where am I? You're in the ring! Now for the big question, who am I? And uh, the inter another interesting thing that popped up when I was recovering from getting the sort of glue put on my face, I couldn't reach mum and dad because they were still working at the time, but I was able to reach my brother, and as it so happened, old episodes of Hercules and Xena, which we used to watch as kids, were on telly, so as I was waiting for mum and dad to come and give me a lift, we were just chilling out, chatting and watching Hercules and Xena like old times. Strange how these things happen.
So why are two of them complete spuds and Daisy just runs off? Is that to... Is that to give me the illusion that I've got a chance? I've never wondered, like, I know I wasn't going to win because they're smart enough to figure that out, but they could have at least not been patronising? Okay, that'll do. So, fact 41. Despite growing up in Australia, I cannot play Aussie rules to save my life. I never actually played a lot of it at school. I played a lot of soccer. I always played that, though the irony is that it was only after I stopped playing in the local league and started playing socially that I finally let go of some of my hang-ups and I became a much better player. Which is a little weird. Of course, admittedly when it comes to Australia you kind of have to be afraid of spiders because there are so many that will just kill you. Or at least allegedly kill you. I think it's actually the snakes which are way more dangerous. Australia does still have some very dangerous venomous uh, spiders. Now please note, poisonous is something that hurts you when you bite it. Venomous is something that hurts you when it bites you. That's a good way to remember it. But yeah, I've got mild phobias where spiders and thunderstorms are concerned, but <coughs> sorry, I am still the spider removal guy for my ha for my housemate because he hates them even more than I do. The s the fear of thunderstorms has largely seemed to ease them. I still get the heebies, and sometimes I have been caught in thunderstorms on my walks, which is, to put it lightly, pants browning. It is not re it is really not nice being caught in a thunderstorm, and you will suddenly learn that you can run very very fast. But my biggest fear remains death. Because I like to try and get everything organised logically. Death is one of those things that it's really impossible to actually understand logically and truly rationalise. Which is why I'm afraid of it. Hold on. Alright, now you two pranics better not... You two pranics better not cough this up again. I mean, I know I coughed up too. Peach has recovered. What are you jumping on me for? I think we're gonna live. There we go. Very nice. So, we're going on to my three least favourite games. As fact three. At the moment, it's... I mean, I'd probably say that even though I did list Triforce Heroes on there, some of the hate for that has eased. But at the time of writing this, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl is my least favourite game. I've got Triforce Heroes on there, and I've also got Mario Party 10. To be honest, I'd probably push Triforce Heroes down a bit, and uh, then wind up putting Mario Kart Wii on the list. Oh, coin block! So yeah. I don't like Mario Kart Wii, so I'd probably put that in place of uh, Triforce Heroes. I definitely don't like Mario Party Island Tour. And I really don't... I really don't like Super Smash Bros. Ultimate either. That's up there. Interestingly, I've never been able to get into Final Fantasy games. It's just sort of... It's not that I hate them. I just didn't get into them. And that's okay, because I know that they're really good and people love them. And I appreciate that immensely, it's just... I don't know. It's not quite my thing. For some reason. I suppose we need to move into a more sombre fact. Given that I've already mentioned sort of games I hate. So maybe it's do something sombre and then wind up punishing myself. I would consider my greatest regret 
not being able to do anything meaningful with myself. Granted by my own standards, but not being able to do anything truly meaningful with my life while my grandparents were alive. It was only, I only really started to turn everything around a couple of years after my nan died. I mean, I'm sure mum and dad would tell me that I did do something useful with my, with my life regardless, but I just wish I'd done more. I'm pretty sure that if there is an afterlife, and I generally have to admit I don't really believe there is, my grandparents probably would be looking on me with pride, but because they know that I've persevered and I've still managed to be a good person no matter what, or at least I've tried to, but I really still wish I'd done more. I'm never going to stop thinking that. I'll take the metal rope. Well, have they given me enough rope with which to hang myself? Used to be the title of Andrew Denton's talk show, Enough Rope. I need to pay attention. Despite the fact I was on entirely the wrong screen, I think I succeeded. Oh, just talking with my sinuses the way they are and my nose being gummed up, sometimes it makes a buzzing in my right ear. It's like having a dodgy earpiece in there. So, well, speaking of sicknesses, I actually do have a mild allergy to penicillin. The worst it does is make me puke, which is still annoying. Oh, coin block. So yeah, throwing up is never pleasant. Ah, uh, there we go. But yeah. So yeah, I'm allergic to penicillin, but it just makes me throw up. I don't have any other allergies apart from hay fever, which never used to affect me until year 10, when like a field of cape weed just set it off and I could not see during a PE class. Kind of sucked. So yeah, it's... Uh, and that sort of uh, was the lead-in to my cold, ironically. I thought it was hay fever. 32, so that's actually pretty consistent. Because I actually thought I was having an attack of hay fever because I'd been doing some lawn mowing. And yeah, I thought, oh, this is just my hay fever going off, it'll recover for a while, and then it didn't quite recover, and then I started feeling that weird chilly sensation you do when you've got a cold. And I was just getting worse as the night went on, and Saturday I was just knackered, like sinuses are just malfunctioning. Everything was just a disaster. Yeah, it's just weird. So, suppose we can bring up another least favourite thing while we're at it. My least favourite foods tend to be avocado, asparagus and beetroot. Though in fairness, I can stand beetroot. But I don't really like it a great deal. My worst dining experience was... Oh, it's communism again which I think affects me most of all. Which would have been nice to see what I had. Prior to that, thank you Bowser. Yeah, so the worst dining experience was at a Chinese restaurant in Melbourne and I know what this is gonna sound like. I'm not disparaging every Chinese restaurant. Chinese, restaurant, Chinese restaurants in my hometown do some absolute bangers for meals. Just beautiful stuff. There's one restaurant, it's not Chinese, but it does a beautiful lemon chicken. This particular Chinese restaurant, it felt like it was trying to live up to the stereotypes. Everything was covered in a thick black sauce, which looked like tar and tasted roughly how I assume tar tastes. The meat was mysterious. It didn't taste like anything I'd ever tasted, and whatever the veggies were, they were terrible. Me being me, 
I actually thought that my, our teachers had dragged us there to punish us. And I actually asked them as much because I had no tact. I thought the food was that awful. Like, it is just that one place at which I've had a terrible dining experience. So I'm not singling it out because it's a Chinese restaurant. I'm singling it out because it's crap. It was really, really bad. Oh, it's me and Mario. I probably should focus. Okay, Yoshi eggs. Alright, I got that one. Mario, stop going for the same ones I am. Alright. Oh, nice. Great, I got three of those on my own. Some of those were really close. Nice work. So, going back to something tangentially related to food. The only thing I've planted, this is fact 47, which hasn't died, is an apple tree. It kind of looks like more a bundle of sticks than anything else, but it's lived on grey water and rain for 20 odd years, and it's kept going in spite of everything. It even managed to produce small fruit somehow. There, just in case. So yeah, that was pretty impressive. Uh, yeah. Let's give some coins to Daisy. So yeah, I don't know how I managed it. Pretty much every flower I've planted has died. But yeah, somehow I actually managed to make this work. And then we can move on to something completely different. I, despite probably A being a complete show off who makes a bunch of awkward moves normally, or B just doing the awkward blokey shuffle from foot to foot, some time ago I actually did take part in the uh, high school debutante ball. I did pretty well. It was a pretty entertaining time and for a while I did have a bit of a romantic relationship with the girl who was my partner. Sadly, that one just sort of finished up, but oh well. It was certainly good while it lasted, and to the best of my knowledge, she's moved on and has a really good life, so hey, I ain't about to complain. She's living her best, and I cannot fault that. Like, that's the important thing. The relationship ends, you you move on. Don't, don't do something shit, okay? Apologies for the, for the profanity, but I have to be a bit blunt on this one. Men don't be shit. It's as simple as that. Like, we got a hell of a lot of work to do, but we can do it. We can be better. And I relish that opportunity, you know? It's like, you realise that there's so much you can change about the world. Like, you can stop people doing terrible things. You can mend racism. You can mend sexism. You can mend all sorts of things. And it's like, when you put it this way, it's like, I'm a superhero. Except I don't have to wear my underwear on the outside of my clothing. It's really good. Okay, we are winding up coming to the last few facts. Well, the last two facts. Okay, I'm probably going to get beaten to all the coins by my uh, companions here. But I'll concentrate. You can see they're pretty much moving to grab them before the coin actually gets there. So, fact 49, surprisingly I actually don't have very many troublemaker stories from high school. Oh, yeah. I did get very cocky after my year... Uh, after year 8 ducks. I mean, I will admit that while I wasn't a troublemaker per se, I was definitely an ass through high school. I was not a good person and I honestly admit that. But I think the catalyst for me gradually getting the lessons right and being a better person was from philosophy class. Well, that could be better. But basically, we'd been discussing 
things like Socratic discourse. Peach. So, and I, I think that we'd been discussing Socratic discourse. There was a, there'd been a few discussions along the way, and somewhere along the way, in one lesson, I wound up getting into a discussion with the teacher, trying to show off. I was getting more and more frustrated and eventually wound up storming out of the classroom. As I was going off to call my head, it sank in. My teacher had so perfectly used my own position and my own ignorance against me to show how little I actually knew. She had destroyed me with a perfect demonstration of Socratic discourse. I came back and apologised to her, and I told her that I, I picked up on exactly what you did, I've been a perfect demonstration. It took a while to get a lot of, to get some things going, but ultimately, it sank in. I'm not always the best. I have my off days, but ever since then, when I can, I've at least tried to be a better person. There, Peach deserves that star block. And three stars as well. So yeah, I've tried to be wiser. It doesn't always work, but I do try each day to be a better person. That's all I can do. I mean, sometimes even my patience and kindness is going to have limits. But that happens. Especially if you work in customer service. They do say that you shouldn't get a prize for basic decency, but I really think you probably should if you work in customer service. Because dealing with customers... Yeah, sometimes you do deserve that. Uh, yeah, they're much faster than me. I was much smoother that time, I didn't hurt my shoulder, and they still beat me. They are just that little bit better. I was just the weak link. And yeah, fact 50, as we go into the final five frenzy, everything I do on this channel is the result of self-teaching. Essentially, I observe, adapt, and improvise, and eventually I find something that works for me. I haven't really had any formal lessons, no one's really guided me. I've asked questions along the way, but I've just sort of made things work. And my guiding principle, along the way there's still that buzzing in my ear. Oh, the game changer! I'm about to get a bonanza! That's gonna be big! But yeah, my ultimate desire with this channel, at the end of the day, is not to wind up going, in, going down there. Okay, that's the second biggest desire at this point in time. Oh, but my biggest desire is to know that... Essentially hope that even one person sees what I do and likes it. That's my ultimate goal, to have just one person smile as a result of what I do. Because if even one person is a little happier for what I'm doing, then the world's truly a better place, isn't it? Or oh, it's a duel with me. Oh dear. I am not confident. I can't believe I botched that roll. Oh, Cyber Scamper. Peach isn't going to fall off. I've really got to concentrate. At least there's a lot less... Okay, I shouldn't do something stupid like trying to squash her. I can pull off some dumb stunts. I've made some ridiculous jumps. I think one time I actually did wind up jumping off someone's head to my doom.
Well, I was just ahead. I think that's a draw. Yep, that's a good result. It has to be done in the accent, and I hope my voice isn't too short. I got through that pretty good! So, yeah. I'll just keep learning and improvising, and hopefully I can make somebody happy. Every time you bring a little bit of happiness into the world, it really does make things better. It just gets that little bit nicer when you bring happiness in. Alright, so this one's a focus for me. Can I do it? Oh, 30 seconds. Okay, so yeah, it's the usual thing. Two of the numpties just die really quickly and the other one sticks around to make you think you've got hope. I see how it is. Oh yeah. I've got to get up to that star space. I can do it. Depending on what I roll. That's a good roll. Oh, I thought there was going to be a duel. I forgot. You don't get duels from landing on the same space as someone. Mario does have the dice block, though. He's got the halfway block. Okay. What are we gonna get? Oh, a coin block changes a lot because you can get up to 99 stars, I believe. Peach is going around in a circle. So I've covered the 50 facts, but who's going to make it to the end? Daisy's got the triple die set. That's a good result for Daisy. Good for Bond. Bad for you. Please not again. Ah, oh, dress for success. Now, if I was playing on my own, I'd cheat. I have to pay attention here. I think it's that one. No surprise! Everyone got it right. I think it's that one. It's not too hard to follow. Yeah, the AI is not going to have a problem with this one. I think it's that one. The AI is not going to cover. Damn it, I lost it. Yeah, that one, it really, whether you get the coins really depends on whether you make the mistakes or not. I thought I followed it, but that last one is always that bit harder. Oh, yeah. I've got to get a good roll and get to that star space. I will take being run over even if it costs me two stars effectively. don't want is to go around a circle again. Money from that minigame would have been nice. Mario is has avoided going in a circle. Peach. Oh, that wasn't good. The light just flickered. Please do not ruin the recording. I've lost more star. Everyone's lost stars. Oh, 
I've still got 12 in the bank. For that matter, so does Daisy. It all depends on what I roll next turn. Daisy's lead is currently unassailable, but if I get to the star space, I'm in a good spot. I mean, that star's for five coins. I mean, not only did you get some fan... Okay, so that doesn't affect our, us. Four better. Not only did you get some fantastic information about me, hopefully, we wound up getting a pretty good game. Camera shy. If I get this one, because this one's a bit of a guessing game, but it's so well designed. It's like the fact you don't know where everyone is. Oh, I got stuck on a wall. Damn. Damn it, I missed. So I missed. I need to find Peach. This gets so tense. Ah, Daisy again. But that doesn't matter. It's, it's you've got to be so quick. That's actually a good shot. Alright, so it depends on this next roll. A lot hinges on this. And I cleared Bowser on top of that. That puts me in the unassailable lead position. Depending on where I land. Safety. Good. I think I'm safe. It's been a heck of a battle. Now, of course, I'm not entirely safe because there are still duels. A three from here nets a duel either way. What a game, though. Oh, good result from Peach. Wait, did she get the did she get the guaranteed duel? Oh. No, she's missed it. I think she's missed it. Just. Alright, what's Daisy gonna do though? Coin block behind her, not a good move. Oh, I think that seals the game. Because I've still got a good lead even there if I wind up in a duel. We'll have to see what the last couple of turns wind up getting us in terms of minigames. So I think I've played pretty well. I think it's been a good contest overall. And that's what I want. Oh, pedal pushes. I'm usually good at this one. Uh, let's see. Alright, where am I? Have I got the inside lane? Yes. I wasn't on that, but okay. It's 
spun out three times and still won. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. So yeah, I apologise for the really choppy cuts. Last turn. Six. Uh, let's go this way and I'll just land on my own. Yeah, might as well get a few more coins. That's not too bad. Alright, Mario has the dual, damn it. <coughs> and he's gonna be dueling me. Wait, he's in last? Look, even if I lose, I've still got a guaranteed win. This one is really tough. Okay, can I do it? Not really. Oh well. It activated a little faster than I thought. Now, I have got the ag exact zero as you can see on the record, so, yeah, I'm not fast. That could have been worse, I can't trigger that anymore. I've still got the instant win. Oh, Peach gets the star. Okay, so... Depending on the mini game, depends on where the Daisy gets a duel. No, I think I'm pretty safe. I think I'm gonna wrap this one up. All right, it's another photo shoot to wrap it up, but we had this a couple of turns ago. Repeat mini games. Oh, can I? Can I actually get victory? Right, there's Mario. Pay attention to the top screen. Oh, that was lucky. That good reflexes. Was that Daisy? Was that Peach? That was Peach. It's Mario. But I think he got a photo of Daisy. Mario. Daisy's near. There's Peach. Oh, turn around, bright eyes. Hey, I got it! Oh well. Plenty of shots in the back. Luigi gets most dishonorable. So, fun fact, when you're playing Goldeneye, there will be most deadly as the award for generally being the player who gets the most kills. The, the award for the player who gets the least kills is a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy reference, mostly harmless. What do you expect from British developers? So the end results, the bonus stars. Item, running, and hex. Was this me? Don't think it was me. Mario, okay. The running star. Who's in the running for this? Don't think it's me. Daisy. Probably because she bought a lot of dice blocks. Hex star. I don't think that was me. Mario and Daisy, okay. So were there any bonus stars I was in the running for? Probably happening. I think I've won though. Mario still loses. Peach is third, Daisy is second. 
and Luigi the Superstar. Nice! Well done Luigi. So, I used six items. Mario won that by a long way. Blue space. Oh, I would have lost the happening star. Oh, I was one short on the hex traps too. I would have won the friendship star. Mario would have won the minigame star. Oh, I was tied for second place, so I don't think I actually would have won any of the bonus stars. But yeah, it didn't matter what happened, I had an automatic victory. But what a high scoring game! That stars for five coins, whoo! And there's the coin graph, which is always wild. I kept getting really good coins, but you can see the big spikes are due to communism. And then the massive drops at the end are because we all bought stars. Alright, minigame wins, 30 turn game, most coins, most stars, board play, coin cash, star stash. Ooh. Well, there we go! Ooh! We got a Piranha Plant figure! And a Piranha Plant rival badge! Hey, very well done! Oh well! <sighs> Happy birthday, everyone! It's a good little celebration, I think. It's a little bit late for my own birthday, but... Oh well, maybe it's a bit early for next year's birthday. Who knows what that's gonna bring? Well... <sighs> It's been good to do this. I'll get this all edited and spruced up and we'll have a real good time. Come by and party whenever you want. It's always a delight to bring this and it's really worth seeing how far I've come too. I think I've improved a lot from way back then. I mean, that was what, 2019 I think I started doing Mario Party DS. Not too long after Link's remakening drops. What stuff do I have? So the collection. Character figures. Need to beat story mode with a few people. Goomba, Scuttlebug, Cheap Cheap, Boo, Shy Guy Womp. Okay, Piranha Plant. Gotta earn a few more points. Now the one thing I've never been able to figure out when you finally get to it. Nobody has... E I don't know if there is any dedicated way to find out how to get the Toad Fountain because I've never been able to get it and it bugs me. Boss trophies and badges. You have to beat the bosses a certain number of times if I got all of them. All of them except for the... Oh no, I have! Nice. I've probably done the... Uh, I probably did stuff uh, to show off the battles in... Uh, in the Let's Play, so yeah. So yeah, we're doing pretty well. Badges. The DS badge... Which badge do I use? Usually the Boo badge. I mean, Wiggler is quite often a friend these days. Yeah, not doing too badly, not bad at all. Ah, <sighs> nice little way to wind down. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little celebration. Thank you very much for joining me. Till next time, this is Red 2, returning to base. <laughs>